Hey YouTubers, Eli the Obity Tech. This is going to be a little quick diag video based on this 1989 Nissan D21 pickup truck Z24 engine. This is based on the DTC 35 EGR temp sensor. In other words, ECU has determined that there's an open circuit. So in this little quick diag, I'm going to show you guys real quick, you know, what to look for. So I'm pretty much uh, right now with the key on engine off, I'm using a voltmeter. I'm back probing the... Uh, EGR temp sensor harness side, which is the uh, the green with red. That's our 5 volt reference signal. So with the hot thermistor, it's showing about 1.9. This is a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. In other words, the higher the temperature, the lower the resistance. So right now, with the key on engine off, it's showing about 1.972 volts. This is with the EGR housing at, I'll show you guys real quick. With the EGR housing showing about, under an eight, under 16.6, between 114, 116 degrees Fahrenheit. Our voltage shows about 1.9. So that's a little quick way to check if your thermistors are uh, actually reading properly. Sometimes if this, uh, these thermistors get heavily coated with carbon deposit, you know, that could also affect the voltage readings uh, due to the fact that it's not allowing the uh, thermistor to heat up properly or quick enough. Another symptom could be uh, partially clogged, either partially clogged or clogged uh, EGR system that's not Allowing exhaust flow through, actually exhaust flow to pass through the uh, thermistor, which is not allowing this thermistor to heat up as well. So there's many variables. So the next thing I'm going to show you guys is actually the specs. So pretty much with the engine idling, with no vacuum applied to the EGR valve, this voltage should be above one volt. When there's a uh, vacuum applied to it, to the EGR valve, this voltage should drop below one volt. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick, that quick test. All right guys, so I already have my handheld vacuum pump already set up. It's connected to the uh, EGR valve port. I'm gonna play about anywhere from five to eight inches of vacuum. And this voltage should drop below one volt. And if it does, that pretty much indicates that our EGR temp sensor is working properly. It's able to read uh, proper voltage when there's a uh, exhaust flow through the uh, through the EGR. All right, so I'm gonna put about five to eight inches of vacuum, and this voltage should drop to the one volt. Here we go. So about five inches of vacuum, our voltage did drop below one volt. So that's a good indication that the EGR temperature is working properly. I'm gonna release the vacuum. The voltage should go back about one volt. So that's pretty much indicating that the our, our EGR temp sensor is working properly. It's able to read. Sometimes if the uh, EGR temp sensor is coated with too much carbon deposit, it will affect the readings on this uh, thermistor. But now by now allowing it to heat up properly when the exhaust flow goes by the uh, thermistor. So this is a uh, one quick way to the to check to, to see if your uh, EGR temp sensor is faulty or not by using these these methods. Another way to check if your back pressure transducer is working properly is to hook up your your vacuum gauge to the hose which is right here and when you uh, snap the throttle the gauge should actually increase so I'm going to set up and show you guys real quick all right guys so with the uh, vacuum gauge already connected to the uh, hose that connects to the uh, back brake transducer I'm going to snap the throttle this uh, zero condition should climb up. So here 
we go. So that pretty much if the uh, if it shows vacuum, that pretty much that pretty much indicates that your back breaker transducer and your uh, e-draw cylinder are working properly. So here we go. solenoid that's able to drive back into the back breaker transducer all the way to the EGR valve all right guys all right guys so after removing the EGR temp sensor from its location this is what I found the thermistor is coated with carbon deposit all around the thermistor so this may or may not be the reason why it's triggering that DTC 35. Perhaps uh, it's not allowing the uh, thermistor to fully heat up normally due to this carbon deposit. I've also removed the EGR valve. The port seems to be nice and clean. I also checked the uh, port on the intake manifold. It, it also seems to be clean so I'm also going to show you guys manually with the EGR removed from the uh, from the vehicle you know how to check it properly all right so first I'm going to show you guys real quick by using a heat gun and checking the thermistor operation manually and also using the ohmmeter so I'm going to set up real quick and then show you guys real quick all right all right guys so I'm here already set up with my ohmmeter I'm currently ohming the uh, the thermistor. It's showing about 1.5 mega ohms. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm not sure if these if this sensor is actually calibrated to read that high of a resistance in that mega ohm range. All right, so I have already my heat gun already set up too. I'm gonna also use my my infrared thermometer. All right, so I'm gonna apply these uh, this heat to the thermistor, and this resistance should drop. As uh, the mister starts to uh, detect the uh, temperature change, so here we go. So as I apply the heat to the mister, you see that our resistance is dropping. It dropped to the kilo ohm range. Showing about. 80.76 kilo ohms. I'm gonna check with my thermometer to see what's the temperature on the thermistor. So currently, it's showing about 102 degrees Fahrenheit. So it means that the thermistor is capable of reading tip, uh, the change of temperature. So the more I think about it. This prong could also be due to the fact that this engine still has another prong, which the computer did throw a DTC45, which is an injector leak. The ECU has detected that the O2 sensor is showing excessively rich mixture, which is making the engine unstable. Since the EGR system works with vacuum, that could also be a possibility that the engine is running rough, is misfiring, backfiring, and that could also be, be affecting the EGR system. Which, which could have probably triggered that DTC 35, but like I mentioned earlier too, perhaps a potential chance that DTC 35 has was triggered was due to this um, thermistor being contaminated with carbon deposit, which is not allowing it to heat up properly. Perhaps inside the engine is a different temperature compared to a heat gun which is already straight to the uh, thermistor um, what else can I say so I'm gonna clean the thermistor real quick to see if there's any uh, difference between a contaminated to versus a clean thermistor alright guys alright guys so with the thermistor already cleaned up I gotta say that it, it did take some effort to remove that carbon buildup 
There it is. It's not it's not 100% clean, but it's better than before. So I'm gonna apply. So right now with the uh, clean thermistor, it shows about 2.9 mega ohms. So it seems that this sensor is calibrated to read mega ohms. So here we go. I'm gonna apply the the heat. So as I apply the heat, the, the thermistor is detecting the temperature, so it's dropping the resistance once again. We're at 200 kilo ohm range. So that shows that the thermistor overall is working properly, whether it's contaminated with carbon buildup or not, it's still able to drop the resistance the same way. So the more I think about it, like I mentioned earlier, our problem will was probably it is probably the DTC 45 because the system is running rich. All right, so next thing I'm going to show you guys is the HR valve. Show you the operation of the vehicle. All so right. I'm going to show you guys real quick the operation of the EGR valve. I'm using a handheld vacuum pump. I'm already connected to the top nip of the valve, which I'm going to apply vacuum, anywhere from 5 to 8 inches of vacuum. And hopefully the camera could pick it up. But there's actually a diaphragm right there. This diaphragm is the one that goes up and down as you apply vacuum so I'm gonna apply vacuum real quick and hopefully the camera can pick up as it moves up as I apply vacuum here we go as you can see there the diaphragm is going up it maxed out at around eight anywhere from seven to eight inches of vacuum I'm gonna release the vacuum and that should drop once again I'm do it one more time same time the vacuum is holding steady it's not dropping so that means that the diaphragm inside the EGR valve is is actually working properly is it's actually sealing the the vacuum which is not allowing it to escape all right guys so hopefully you guys enjoy this little diagnosis you know showing you guys what to look for and what to do when you uh, get a DTC 35 on this Nissan's pretty much the OBD1 vehicles. Alright guys, thanks for watching, subscribe if you like.